About two years ago, I began using Zig in my spare time. I wanted to challenge myself to learn a lower level language, specifically for making games. Like many of you, I've been a gamer for most of my life, but as I got older and I got more into programming as a hobby, I became less interested in playing them and more interested in how they work. In this video, I want to give a brief introduction into the devlogs I'm going to make for my game, Elixir Punk, and why I'm choosing to write it from scratch. Well, with the help of a graphics library called Raylib, but otherwise from scratch. Now, there's really three big reasons why I've chosen to go engineless. Uh, graphics programming in general is such a fascinating topic. Many of the aspects of building a game are great for learning about data structures, algorithms, optimizations, and so much else. Uh, for example, pathfinding is often done using the A star algorithm, uh, which if you use something like Unity or Godot, you might not have to implement yourself. Uh, this is completely fine if you're trying to get a game off the ground quickly, uh, but in doing so you rob yourself of learning how to implement it yourself. Uh, this, there can be pieces of it that you can take and re-implement in other algorithms, or just even in your regular code. Uh, for example, I never had to use a heap to sort before implementing A star, and now I'm familiar with it, and I've used it in one other place since. And I just implemented A star, so that's pretty good. Now, I don't have any fancy CS degrees, so if you went to school for computer science, you probably already knew about the heap and had to implement it. Uh, but I rarely use complex data structures and algorithms in my day-to-day -day programming job, which is in a completely different field. Uh, so the opportunity to learn about them and implement them was too good to pass up. The second reason, and this is probably the main one, is that I'm a Vim user. Uh, I can't stand using my mouse when I'm writing code. I don't like the workflow of having to switch between keyboard and mouse 20 times, having to click and drop nodes into place, right clicking to create a new C sharp script, all that jazz. I just don't like it. It's not for me. I've been programming too long uh, with Vim to go back to using my mouse now. Uh, you're completely allowed to like it. And in fact, if you do, there's nothing wrong with that. Just keep doing it. The third reason is much like the second, and that's that I dislike working in a big editor with all the fancy tools that I'm just not going to use. I'm writing a fairly simple 2D game, and I want control over how everything is implemented, uh, aside from the basic stuff like drawing to a screen, which is why I'm using a graphics library. Uh, with that out of the way, let's talk about the game. ArrayLib is very easy to use, so I was able to get things up and running pretty quickly. Uh, the game I want to make is a cross between a survival game and a tower defense game, where instead of buying towers from a shop, you have to gather materials to craft them. It's a concept that I've always wanted to see in a game, but haven't, so I decided to make it myself. Yeah, instead of waves, enemies will be spawned in a night like other survival games, or they can be summoned by the player at an altar. You can create your own waves of enemies depending on what you need to craft. The enemy drops are tied to the crafting system as is the summoning of them, so you'll need to kill certain ones to craft the next best upgrade. Uh, when enemies spawn, they try to attack your portal. You gather materials to craft your towers, use them to kill the enemies, and that's the basic game loop. Um, several months into development now, about seven if you go off my GitHub, uh, I want to catch up to speed with where the game is. There's no levels, instead I opted for procedural generation. It's much easier as a solo developer and the content is generated for you. And as a programmer, I really enjoy seeing the results that it makes. It's really fun to just spend hours and hours just going through the random iterations that you get with each different seed you put in. Uh, so first I drew a quick tile map and placed it on the ground. I originally went for using cellular automata uh, for level generation, as I like the kind of cave layout that it gives. Uh, it's fairly quick to implement as well, so it seemed like a decent enough choice. However, after making some basic modifications to it, I realized that it just wasn't going to work for what I wanted. Now, if I wanted to add biomes later on, the way that I implemented the cellular automata algorithm just wasn't going to work. So instead, I reworked it using the lazy flood fill algorithm, which I got from this video here. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description. The new algorithm is awesome and allows for lots of flexibility for adding biomes later on but when I'm ready to. Uh, for now though, we're just having the one biome. Um, we're just worried about making a playable alpha build. So after I got that running, I added in trees and bushes and finally towers. Uh, as you can see from this early footage, a lot of the towers were quite janky and the enemies don't really have any real pathfinding ability. Uh, they just kind of walk towards the portal. Uh, but the prototype that I built there was fun enough to convince me to keep the project going. So the next step was basically to rebuild everything using proper tooling. So one of the next things I did was implement the A star algorithm for the enemies. And I just finished wrapping this up, so which is why I'm making this video. In order to get A star pathfinding to work properly, you had to redo how I was implementing the tiles. Previously, the enemies didn't have any knowledge of which tiles they were standing on and if they contained an obstacle that they couldn't walk on. Uh, previously, the tiles were also stored in an array list and then drawn to the screen for that list. However, to account for the extra information needed for A star, I switched this out to be the classic A star node. 
The nodes themselves also keep track of which enemies have visited them or not. As I said earlier, we can use a heap for quickly sorting to the lowest node. And from there, I've tried it with up to 200 enemies and it's pretty quick. Now it's not perfect and it's still being built at build time uh, instead of being recalculated at runtime. So if the player builds anything, the path won't know about it and it won't change. But for now, I'm happy. Next up, I'm going to be building an inventory system. So stay tuned for all that. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure you don't miss out on the next video.